Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are taking a look at this book, Roly Poly Pets, a kid's guide to pill bugs and sow bugs and how to keep them. Roly Poly Pets. Introduction. If you're reading this book, you probably want to know more about roly polies. Maybe you want to know more about what kind of animal they are or what they eat or how they live or even how to keep them as pets. If so, keep reading. First of all, these creatures have a lot of different names. I asked a lot of people from different parts of the United States and some other countries and what they called them. People in the United States and Canada said roly poly, pill bug, pilly, potato bug, tater bug, sow bug, wood sow, wood bug, wood louse, armadillo bug, doodle bug, sand puppy. Here are some names from other countries. In Australia, it might be called a slater or a slater bug. In Brazil, it could be called tatunzinho, which means little armadillo. And in Denmark, its name means bench biter. There are some other names in other countries that you may want to take a look at on this page. Pillbugs. Maybe you've noticed two different general types of these creatures. A lot of people use the name pillbug or roly poly for the type that can roll up into a round ball for protection. Sow bugs. The name sow bug is often used for those that have flatter bodies and they can't roll into a ball. Isobots. Some people may think they're insects, but pill bugs and sow bugs are crustaceans, like crabs, lobsters, and shrimp. Whether they can roll up or not, and no matter where they live, scientists call all pill bugs and sow bugs and their close relatives isopods. Some kinds of isopods live on land, like pill bugs and sow bugs. Some of their relatives live on land part of the time and also spend time underwater. Others live underwater all the time in lakes, ponds, rivers, streams, and even the ocean. The word isopod is from the Greek for same foot, and it's easy to see why. Unlike the feet of some of their more distant relatives like crabs and lobsters, one isopod foot looks pretty much the same as any other isopod foot. In this book, I will use the word isopod a lot because it can mean pill bug or sow bug. I'll use pill bug or sow bug when I want to be specific. The parts of an isopod. When you look carefully at an isopod, you will notice some things about its body. It has two antenna on its head. Like the antenna on an ant or butterfly, these antenna help the isopod to feel its way around and to find food. An isopod's body is divided up into lots of segments, and all together these segments form a kind of armor shell on their backs, called a carapace. It's made of chitin and calcium, just like the shells of its crustacean relatives, crabs and lobsters. On some isopods, like the one in the picture on the next page, you can see two small spikes on the back end. Those are called uropods. Isopods can use these like straws to collect water. They also use them to get rid of ammonia gas, a waste product. If you gently turn an isopod upside down, you'll see its legs. It might be hard to count all those wiggly legs, but isopods have 14 of them. If you look between the legs and the uropods of the isopod in the picture, you can see small white patches. Those white patches are gills. Most creatures that have gills breathe underwater. The isopods that live on land have special gills that let them breathe on land, but gills don't work very well if they get too dry. That's why isopods are usually found in moist places. How do isopods grow? Like insects, crabs, and many other animals, isopods have an exoskeleton. As you may know, this means they don't have any bones. Instead, the hardest part of their bodies are on the outside. To grow, they have to take off the outer layer of exoskeleton. This process of taking off the outer skin is called molting. This can be a dangerous time for an isopod because their normally hard armor is quite soft during molting and they cannot run away from predators while they're doing it. Isopods have an interesting solution to this problem. They molt 
on one half of their body at a time. In this way, only half of their body is soft at one time, and the molting half a skin doesn't take as long as molting an entire skin. An isopod molts a number of times during its life, and it gets bigger each time. What do isopods eat? Most isopods that live on land are called detritivores. This means they belong to nature's cleanup crew. In the case of isopods in nature, they eat lots of fallen leaves and old soft wood. By eating dead plants, they do a job similar to the job earthworms do. They turn dead plants into soil that living plants can use. Isopods are not picky eaters. They'll also eat other things if they find them, like fruit or even dead insects. If you keep isopods as pets, don't worry about feeding them dead bugs. They'll do just fine without them. You can read more on what to feed pet isopods in the chapter called Keeping Isopods as Pets. Many of the isopods that live in the ocean are detritivores too. Some of them though are parasites. That means they live in or on the bodies of other animals and use them as food. The tongue eating isopod actually eats the tongue of a fish, then takes over the space where the tongue used to be to live there. What eats isopods? Isopods have armored bodies and pill bugs can even roll up into a ball to protect themselves from other animals. It is really hard to take a bite out of something that rolls away every time you try. Imagine setting a perfectly round apple on a table and then trying to take a bite without using your hands. Even with the natural protection that isopods have, there are still quite a few creatures that eat them. Toads, certain lizards, and some birds like to eat isopods, for example. There's even a spider called the woodlouse hunter that specializes in catching and eating isopods. It has strong fangs it uses to bite right through the isopod armor. In this photo, you can see that the woodlouse hunter has caught a pill bug that it's about to eat for lunch. What do people do with isopods? Have you ever heard of a vivarium? It is a glass cage where people keep certain kinds of animals. Often people keep live plants in the vivarium to make the vivarium more natural and beautiful and to help the animals feel more at home. Brightly colored tropical frogs called poison dart frogs are popular pets to keep in vivariums. Years ago, someone put isopods in a vivarium. The isopods did just what they do in nature. They cleaned up. They ate the food the animals didn't eat. They ate dead plant leaves and stems. They even cleaned up the animals' wastes. They made good soil for the plants. In other words, they made keeping the vivarium clean and healthy a lot easier. Isopods are now very popular as vivarium janitors. They're not just for frog vivariums. They clean up after lizards, snakes, tortoises, tarantulas, scorpions, even after their distant cousins, hermit crabs. People who keep vivariums often buy isopods online to make keeping a vivarium a lot easier. Here's a picture of a crested gecko in a vivarium where isopods help keep things clean, much like they do in nature. Some people keep isopods just for fun too. It's easy to see why. There are many interesting colors and patterns of isopods and they're easy to keep. Probably one of the easiest pets you can ever have. Ladies and gentlemen, for the rest of the book, I'm just going to scroll through and you can read it on your own. If the video is going too quickly for you, you can just pause each page and read through it independently.